Well, welcome everyone to your fundraising 411. We're going to do a roundup uh, how to activate supporters across all of your fundraising efforts. Um, hello, we are Whitney and Chris from Give Sign Up and Run Sign Up, and uh, we're here because we want to help nonprofits raise more with free fundraising technology. So, the agenda for today, we're going to go over a welcome to Give Sign Up and Run Sign Up. We're going to explain to you how it's always your mission first. Um, uh, Whitney's going to talk about some great fundraising run, walk, rides. I'm going to talk about uh, do-it-yourself and peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Uh, Whitney's going to go over uh, ways, other ways to expand your funnel, your marketing funnel. I'm going to talk about some great customer stories and how to get started. And then we'll take some questions. And as I mentioned a little bit ago, you can put your questions into the questions box and either Elizabeth will answer them, who's here on the webinar with us as well, or we can maybe talk about some at the end. Well, welcome to Give Sign Up and Run Sign Up. This is my favorite part. The slogan, raise more, save time, easy. So good, just rolls off the tongue. So Give Sign Up is built on the technology and business foundations of Run Sign Up. And of course, you probably know that Run Sign Up is uh, one of the best race registration sites out there. They've been around since 2010. Um, and we're built on best in, class, best in class technology to elevate nonprofits revenue generation and supporter engagement. Um, it's purpose-built fundraising technology for nonprofits, uh, which includes event fundraising, uh, event specific like galas and dinners and that sort of thing, and online giving. Um, and already 9,000 plus nonprofits are using Give Sign Up today. This is a great um, infographic created by our user experience team, where it really shows you what tools can be used by nonprofits only, what tools can be used by everybody, and what tools are just for endurance events. So. With just for nonprofits, we have ticket events that live outside the endurance space, as I mentioned, like uh, galas or dinners. It's funny, all the events I can think of seem to be food related, so I must be hungry for lunch. That's okay, I'll keep that to myself. Um, and other things that are just for nonprofits are fundraising campaigns, so both do it yourself and peer to peer fundraising, um, online donations, including donation forms and websites. Um, for everybody, we've got membership management uh, with uh, a lot of a lot of race organizations who use that. We also have registration for runs, walks, rides, um, pretty much any endurance event you could think of. Uh, things that are just for endurance events are the race day suite of tools for timers. Um, but the, my favorite part about this is that it's all one payment account and one login. So if you do all of this, you can access it all from your one account, which is great. It is an all-in-one supporter engagement platform, which allows you to get data on supporters of all types. So folks who are just donating, folks who are attending your ticket event, folks who have attended your ride, you get data on all of those people. Uh, and we give you ways to engage supporters with new events, fundraising campaigns, and donation opportunities. You can easily connect to other platforms that use your nonprofit, uh, that your nonprofit uses, I should say. Um, and if you look to the other graphic to the right, you can see, we list the kinds of events that you can use with us, but these are just some of the platforms we connect to it, which include Salesforce, Blackboard, Kindful, Bloomerang, Network for Good. Um, you can uh, easily arrange uh, reporting that um, you can pull from your events, from your donation sites, from your run, walk rides, and you can import them quite easily into, your, uh, into whatever you happen to be using. And as always, your mission is first. And speaking of your mission is first, your mission is first. Always, uh, which is a great thing to remember because you you are in control. That's the beauty of a self-serve platform like this. You're not uh, reaching out to a webmaster or reaching out to a consultant saying, hey, listen, we need to change this by next week. You can change it right now, which is a beautiful thing. We offer fully branded websites and forms uh, for run, walk, rides, ticket events, donation websites, donation forms, fundraising campaigns. And it's your logos, your colors, your images, your mission. Some of the features of these websites that we provide essentially for free are BYO domain or subdomain with free SSL certificates, custom photos and videos, your messaging and organization info, uh, image slideshows on fundraising pages. This is one of the newest um, additions that I think is so fantastic. So even someone who's just creating uh, a fundraiser page within your race, within your event, within your um, standalone uh, uh, fundraising campaign, they can create their own slideshow of images to help get their friends and family to support, which is awesome. Custom action buttons, um, and of course, our, the ever-present and ever-important fundraising goal thermometer, keeping people engaged and aware of how close you are 
and how their contribution has helped you get towards your fundraising goal. So your mission is first everywhere. It's first in customizable e-cards, which you can see, uh, I think, on the lower right. You see a couple different uh, e-cards, a Giving Tuesday e-card to Molly, a Happy Holidays e-card to Marlise, a Gift for You e-card to Bob. Hey, these all sound like Bickles. I think it might be a Bickle party over at this uh, e-card e uh, demo, but it's very cool to see that you can, uh, anyone who's getting one of these, you can customize it and make it look very cool. Um, on the upper right-hand corner, you can see our, our customized donation receipts, which can include your logo. Um, and we also have customizable social sharing images and messaging, which you can see on the lower left, um, which you provide the image. And also you can give, that, uh, give your supporter uh, the customized message, uh, a preloaded message they can choose or they can adjust it themselves. But very, very cool stuff. And now I'm gonna hand it over to wonderful Whitney, who's gonna talk about fundraising run, walk, rides. All right, let's get into the fundraising component, which is on the Run Sign Up platform. And this is just another way for you to engage your supporters through events. I tried to go to the next slide. <laughs> so, step <laughs> I'm in <one>. control. <laughs> Step one, we are going to first dive into the back end of the system and kind of talk about the just basic setup of how you would turn this on. And then we'll talk about some of the features. So step one is just enabling donations. You must enable donations in order to use our fundraising. So you wanna go in to donations, enter in your overall, like the overarching donation goal, as well as your description for the charity. And then you, want to go to the next slide. And then you want to make sure that you are adjusting the processing fee to what you want, whether that be you guys are incurring that fee where it's coming out of the donation or if you would like the customer to pay that fee where they're going to be paying a processing fee on top of that donation you can also use a, you can use the customization that we have where you could split it 50 50 and you can provide them the option to choose whether or not they want to take the fee or they want to pass that on to you so we have a lot of options pretty much the sky's the limit when it comes to this but you do need to make this decision before you move forward because we do default to the processing fee being paid by the race registrant. So next, now that you've turned on donations and you have that basic setup done, you can move on to fundraising. So when you first go into fundraising, it's going to ask you if you want to enable it because you haven't turned it on yet. So you want to enable fundraising. The next step is going into general settings. I do want to note that we have team fundraising as well. You have to turn on individual fundraising in order to have team fundraising because you have to have an individual fundraiser in order to have a team fundraiser. And what the team fundraiser essentially is, is bringing people together. Let's say you want, I, I'm just going to use soccer for an example. Let's say you have people like a soccer team that wants to raise a specific amount of money for this charity. So they could have their name as the team name, and then all of those individuals could be on the team. Now, those individuals could have their own fundraising goals, but there will also be an ultimate team fundraising goal. So that's the difference between individual and team. It's essentially just grouping the individuals together to create an aggregate total of what they've raised. So. Moving on back into the individuals, we'll jump into that general settings. This is the most important piece of the general setting component. So this is whether or not you want to have fundraising minimums. That means that if I go and I sign up for a specific event, whether that be a walk, a run, a volleyball tournament, are you going to make me meet a minimum amount of money that I have to raise in order to participate in this event? So we have two options for that. You can either do where the registration fee is waived in the beginning, so they're just paying zero dollars to get in with a promise that they're gonna make it, or fee not waived, where they're gonna have to pay that registration fee to get into the actual race. And then we will talk about this in a couple slides later on. Um, we have ability to refund them that money. You can go to the next slide. 
So we have the ability to refund that money. So if you have them pay for that registration fee up front, let's say it's $50, but you say if you meet a minimum requirement of $150 fund, funds raised for this charity, we'll give you your money back. So that's why we have this feature where it will refund them their money once they hit that minimum amount fundraised. 90% of the time, probably 99% of the time, you're going to want to use this because otherwise you're letting people in for free. And if they don't hit that minimum fundraiser, you are chasing them down trying to get that money. And it's just not, it's not feasible and it's not the best way to manage the registration. It just creates a lot more work and it's hectic. So definitely want to go that route. Now, moving on to the actual customization component of it, this is another section underneath individual fundraising. This is where you can change the word fundraiser to any term that you want. This would be in the heading. We also have where you can customize the submenu options in the drop down from your website. So there's you have wiggle room to essentially call this fundraiser what you'd like to call it. <clears throat> Now, even more fun things for fundraising, just to create additional engagement. So we have fundraising milestones. This is really just an incentive to get your participants to want to raise more money. A fantastic driver for that is swag. Everyone loves swag. They love it. They might have six drawers of it, but they love it and they want more of it. So definitely hitting certain milestones, you can put that they get a sweatshirt or maybe they get tickets to your gala. Um, it could be whatever you want or you're just rewarding them and acknowledging that they're doing a great job. People love affirmation. So you definitely want to utilize the fundraising milestones. I do want to mention, so we have the ability where you can upload images, you can sell your swag this is not going to trigger swag to like be released so you actually have to mail that swag out you will get notified that they've hit that marker and then you need to take the action to get that swag to them i do love that phrase um uh people love affirmation i just want to say you're doing a great job whitney because i agree people do love affirmation <laughs> and you deserve it thank you chris so a couple more features. This is going to be more feature based, not necessarily the tech side base of how to set it up. We are going to dive into some really cool things that we have on our platform you don't want to miss out on. So the first one is the personalized fundraising pages. I love this. I think that this just it it makes the user experience so much more valuable and it just creates this connection with the participants as well as trying to reach more participants because you can upload your own photos. You can create a slideshow so you could essentially tell a story through your slideshow in your header. You could add your personal story of why you are choosing to fundraise for this charity. You have your donation bar that people can see. They can see who's donated. And you can also, you have your ability to link your Facebook fundraising, which we'll talk about later. You'll have your ability to link your Facebook fundraising to this, where it makes it super easy to donate. So another feature is this fundraising emails and customization. This one is actually very underrated. We don't have a lot of people that use it, but it's definitely a benefit for you because you can create these templates and you can design them with your charity in mind. You can design them with sponsors in mind, but you can create these templates where your, your fundraisers can send these out to people to either get them to get them to donate or thank them for donating. And so it's a, just another touch point for you to get more exposure as well as to give your participant more value. So I highly recommend looking into these. I love that. It makes it so easy for the participant to not only thank their supporters, but keep them engaged. And so that maybe that if they do this again down the line, they'll have a good memory from uh, using us and, have, and uh, having supported their friend. This is great. Exactly. So the Facebook fundraising, what I talked about a little earlier, this is definitely the coolest feature we have. <laughs> well, one of them, but it's it's up there. Um, so we integrate with Facebook. So you know when you jump on Facebook and you see people like for their birthday or just in general, they're like, donate to my charity for my birthday. This is essentially what it is, but you can use this via run sign up. So you go through the registration flow, you sign up, 
then at the very end of your sign up, it says a uh, link to Facebook fundraising or share Facebook fundraising. So they click that and then it's going to pop you into Facebook where you can basically share your charity and your fundraising efforts on Facebook. Then the exposure that you get on Facebook is incredible. So it's something that you definitely want to use. Um, it increases your donations. We have seen that time and time again. There is no process, processing fee with Facebook. So the fact that you can get more donations done on Facebook, it will lower your overall processing fee for donations. And it is definitely the best way to spread the message. And what happens is that your charity on Facebook will receive those funds. So the funds go through the the funds go through Facebook, but they will show up in Run Sign Up. So you'll be able to see that these people have donated via Facebook, and you can kind of see on the um, example, Tim Scott's, where it says $50 from Facebook donation. So it just shows that a donation was made via Facebook, but the funds will actually funnel through Facebook. And we do have reporting for that. So we hit you at all angles. All right, Chris. Yes, we do. And one of the other angles we'd like to, to help hit and help uh, is with do-it-yourself and peer-to-peer -peer fundraise, fundraising, uh, one easy way to create. Um, so there's no event required uh, with our newest uh, release of fundraising. So you can activate your supporters and empower them to fundraise for you via do-it-yourself and peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns. You can enable fundraising year-round with no associated event needed. And you can do one or multiple campaigns. And so we can talk about the couple different ways you can do that. So the key features to that, of course, include, as with Run Sign Up, the custom branding. So you can include your messaging, your logo, slideshows on every single fundraising page, including the main one, which I love as well. And of course, you can bring your own domain or subdomain. Just as Whitney just was just speaking about, we have that great free Facebook fundraiser integration as well. Um, and each of those uh, campaign pages can include campaign goals and individual fundraiser goals and goal thermometers. Um, you can have some of those branded donation receipts I showed you a little bit earlier. Same with the social sharing customization I showed you earlier as well. And of course, on the back end, one of the things our customers love about Run Sign Up and Give Sign Up is our robust insights and analytics uh, on their data. So you can use those to view and export your campaign data and, and import it into whatever you happen to be using. Uh, or we also had a, 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 um, a really great webinar this week about a, a integration with uh, using integrations with Reg Forward. So if you're interested in that, you can always reach out to someone here and we can let you know how you can uh, make it an even smoother uh, data transition. So we're there's three free and flexible, that is a tongue twister, one more time. Three free and flexible, there we go. Three free and flexible ways to create and promote do-it-yourself and peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns. Uh, number one, you've got the campaign page, which you can do unlimited do-it-yourself and peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns in minutes. So that would just be a page of just fundraising campaigns. Then you have a fully a full a fundraising website, um, so you can enable a website for any page by adding that cover page, and you can do a call to action. You can include buttons, video, and more. And then finally, and I think this is the way to go, I think it's so smart and a great way to centralize your fundraising is you can create a campaign hub and upgrade to a full donation website, which features multiple campaigns on a single website. So that looks like a donation button at the top, um, a fundraising campaign uh, on one of the one of the squares, and then a donation form on the other. So you people can really see all the different ways uh, they can support you. And we've got some great examples coming up in customer stories where you can see that as well. And now Whitney's gonna talk about how to expand your funnel. Yes, so there are a handful of features that we have on our platform that we encourage everyone to use because they will drive participants. A big driver of participants is having loyal supporters that tell other people about your event. It Word of mouth is huge. And as you see here, 50% of participants join an event because of friends. And that is true. It's like, hey, I'm running this half marathon or hey, I'm going to do this golf event. Will you come with me? Like, let's do a team. Let's join in. So you definitely want to use these features because they're free. They're easy. It's free marketing. You just need to nourish the relationship that you have with your current participants. And with the free resources that we have that you literally can just turn on, then you are good to go with moving forward. Referral rewards. 
Great way. And like I encourage every single individual that uses our platform to turn on referral rewards. This is just a fantastic way for your participants to easily share your race and get more participants. You can incentivize them, whether it is with refunds, whether it is with swag, or you just want to say, hey, please refer friends, we love you. But it what you do is you turn it on, it creates a unique link that goes in the confirmation email, then they get that link and they share it with their friends. They can earn, earn rewards and you earn participants. So it's just a fantastic way to drive more traffic. And the best part, if you do decide to give swag or you do decide to give refunds, you are going to make you are going to get more participants out of this regardless. So you'll get more participants. Most of the time, people do not hit that cap that you give them. Let's say it's refer five friends, get $20 back. Most of the time people are referring three to four. So you're not even refunding them, but you're getting three to four more participants. So it's a win-win. And like I said previously, the groups teams. Groups teams, something that I wanna mention before we dive any deeper, because this is very important. So listen up. Groups and teams are not the same as fundraising teams. Fundraising teams are specific for individual fundraisers to collaborate and gain and get gain, collaborate and accumulate money and as a total goal. Whereas groups and teams are specifically for participating in an event where you are doing something social, maybe it's competitive, or you are just whatever that a soccer team or a volleyball team those are completely different than fundraising teams but they are a great way to get people to join and one of the reasons why is because you can again offer incentives let's say they get 10 people to join after 10 people they get five dollars back every additional participant that signs up so it's like okay let me build the biggest team so that i can get all of my money back and we can support this race so Again, fantastic way of incentivizing your participants. Another great way is Facebook groups. So this isn't specifically on our platform. We, I mean, Facebook is Facebook. So, but it is definitely what we've seen over the past year and a half, as well as just in general, a great way to engage community, create community, and really build trust with your participants. So Building a Facebook group is fantastic. There are some pros and cons to building a Facebook group. One, you have to be familiar with Facebook or get familiar with Facebook. Two, you need to be active on Facebook fairly often. Um, there's a great way that you could, like you could, if you don't want to be on there all the time, you could create ambassadors where those ambassadors are kind of the moderator and scanning your Facebook to make sure that they're responding to everybody that's posting um, because it can be time consuming, especially if you have a big group. But a great opportunity if you have eager volunteers who do have, who are active on social yes. media, a great opportunity yes. to engage them in a way like that. And that's, again, Facebook is just like, put it being able to put out that message you posting every day is a positive you can go live on facebook so you can just show up and be like hey we're here whatever you're doing um doing little giveaways on facebook just keeping them engaged uh it's definitely it's no cost to you other than your time and it's just making sure that you are monitoring what's going on in the facebook group because people have opinions and you guys know how that goes. So you just wanna, you wanna balance your pros and cons before you dive into this, but I highly recommend at least testing it out because it's a fantastic way to just provide more and more value to your participants. All right, Chris. Wonderful. So I'm going to talk about some great customer stories of how nonprofits are using Give Signups free campaigns to raise more through our peer-to-peer -to -peer tool. So the first one we're going to talk about is the one that I was sort of mentioning as I mentioned what a campaign hub might look like. Um, I think Wheeler Mission is really doing that. They've got the great do-it-yourself do fundraising options and do-it-yourself campaigns for every occasion you can think of. I don't know if you can see all the way on the right, but they have 
uh, create a fundraiser for your birthday, create a fundraiser for an anniversary. Um, they have one uh, that shows their, their uh, customers how to create a run, walk, ride endurance event for them. They have one they can do in memory of, and they also just have the straight up uh, ability to donate to Wheeler Mission. So it's one hub for all campaigns, and they created a cover page with creative graphics to organize multiple campaigns and the custom messaging I just mentioned. And you get the reporting on every single different campaign like that from that one place, which is so helpful. And the Semper Fi Fund, which is one of our one of our uh, most successful organizations here using the platform, um, they're, they've got their Marine Corps Marathon Charity Bib Fundraising. So this is a fundraising minimums based event and the different events they have are the virtual participant, a guaranteed in-person marathon, marathon participant, guaranteed in-person 10K participant, et cetera. Um, many fundraisers opted for even a higher fundraising threshold than the minimum required, which is, shows how, how their supporters were really wanted to, to support and engage. Um, one of the great things that also rolled out this year is we got the pre-checked checkbox prompting the donor to cover the processing fee. So if you elect to cover the processing fee as the organization, then we have it automatically set so that when um, a donor comes through or a participant comes through, that box uh, prompting them to cover the processing fee is already checked. And of course, they connected to fundra uh, Facebook fundraisers for maximum reach, and it really worked out for them. Um, the Denver Walk to End Epilepsy, which is a fundraising hybrid run, walk, ride. So they had free registration, but everyone is a fundraiser, which I think is a great opportunity and a great way to do things um, uh, depending upon the organization. Um, so you do get a t-shirt, but only if you reach the fundraising minimum of $100. And the more you do, the more you get. So with premium swag for raising $250, $500, or $1,000, people get even better rewards. Um, and as Whitney showed us earlier, they renamed uh, from fundraiser to participant. And um, the donation checkbox at checkout to encourage a donation from uh, the registrant. So that's something that you can add on a quick, a quick little smaller donation. So uh, like five, ten, twenty-five dollars. When people already have their wallets out, they already have their credit card out. They're more willing to even uh, be even more generous. So a great, a great tool to take advantage of. And finally, the 10th anniversary Red Shoe Shuffle, which I believe is a Ronald McDonald House uh, event. Um, so fundraising virtual, I'm, I'm right about that, Whitney, right? Yes, right. you are correct. So that's a fund, so it's a virtual fundraising, uh, fundraising virtual 5K run and walk. And it was 100% virtual, but this year they raised the most money in Red Shoe Shuffle history, which is incredible. They used our challenge feature and they combined it with photo uploads going live on Facebook and milestones for additional engagement. And you can see what some of these milestones look like to the right. Um, so you hit the milestone and you are automatically rewarded with this beautiful uh, level one badge, level two badge. But those badges are also customizable. So if you wanted to do use that challenge feature, you could make it work for whatever your organization is doing as well. And I think that's the last of our uh, customer stories. Am, am I right in thinking that, Whitney? You are correct, Chris. Wonderful. Well, the beauty is you can get started whenever you want because guess what? It's free. Uh, and you, you, there's no uh, setup. There's no subscription fee. Obviously, we've talked about it. It's just processing fees that you can elect to decide whatever works uh, for your organization, how they are applied. Um, but uh, you, all you have to do is go to runsignup.com or give signup.org and you click get started free and it'll prompt you to create a ticket event, a run walk ride, uh, a donation site, a fundraising campaign. Um, remind me if I'm missing something else. I think there's five now, um, but uh, that's where you go to get started. And even if you wanted to just try it out, uh, that's the beauty of there's no setup, there's no commitment with us. So you can start uh, your event. And if in the end you don't like it, it's not, it hasn't cost you anything to sort of get in the give sign up run sign up sandbox and see if you can build your castle there. Wow, that analogy is perfect for this weather, am I right? <laughs> oh yes, here are the five different things you've made. Ticket event, a donation website, donation form, a run walk ride, or a fundraising campaign. And those are your five options for getting started free. Um, so I think now we've come to the point where if there's any questions that have been asked or not covered or people want to type in questions now, uh, we, we can be happy to, uh, to take them. Yeah, we don't, we didn't have any questions come in um, during the presentation, but if anyone has one, um, 
will stay on for another minute or two um, if you want to yeah. enter it in the questions module on the right side. I'll preempt the question I'm sure everyone's wondering, uh, as Whitney and I figured this out earlier. Uh, I am a Taurus and she is a Sagittarius. So we didn't know that, but now we do. Uh, we know our signs. Elizabeth, what's your sign? Um, I'm a Scorpio. Oh, explains a lot. I don't know. I always just say that. Because I just say <laughs> <laughs> so this is a question that I think that Whitney had uh, answered a little bit earlier, but we'll, I, I think maybe you can speak to this again since you deal with this a lot. Um, can you do both fundraising yes. teams and teams and groups? Yes, I would love to speak to this. And this is a fantastic question because we get it about pretty much weekly. Yeah. So you do, you can, yes. To answer your question, it's can you do both fundraising teams and teams groups? Yes, technically you can. Do we recommend it? No, we do not. And the reason why is because it creates confusion just like the fact that you asked this question, it creates confusion confusion for your participants as well as for you, because you're dealing with two separate things. You're dealing with the fundraising teams and the groups and teams. And what happens is that your participants think, oh, well, I created my, I created my team sandbox here. So then that means that I also created a fundraising team. And that is not true you still would have to go ahead and create that fundraising team and they don't link together. So short answer for that is yes, you can. Do I recommend it? Absolutely not. And if you, the way to decipher which one you want is whether or not you are fundraising based. If you are going in this because you are raising money and you want to be fundraising focused, go with the fundraising teams because it's still giving you that social environment where people are joining teams. They're a part of a team. They can see their teams. So definitely go with fundraising teams. If it's for a race or like a walk where they're trying to get 50 people to sign up, then go with the group's teams and then just let them do individual fundraising. That's great advice, and uh, and I defer to your expertise because as an account manager, you're you're dealing with people and their issues with that all the time. So you you see that the true um, frustrations and pain points then can come up when those things exist in the same event. Um, the yes. next question we have: uh, How do you integrate personal fund? Oh no, sorry. Yes, how do you integrate personal fundraising with an event we already set up? Now I think I think you can turn it on after the event is set up, but would that cause confusion based on? you know people who had already signed up being able to create a fundraiser what do you what do you think Whitney so you can definitely turn fundraising on once you even though your event is live what you need to do if you do that is that you need to send an email out to all of the individuals that have already registered letting them know that you have created that you now have fundraising and giving them the donate link or the fundraising link to create their own fundraiser if you want them to. And then the individuals that are going to register, they're fine because they're just going through the flow, but you need, the the number one thing is making sure that you create verbiage and you communicate very well why, like that you turn fundraising on, why you turn fundraising on and how they can fundraise. Yeah, that is, uh, that's that's great advice. Uh, that's, and uh, thank you for that. Uh, let me see. Maybe we'll just do one more. Um, oh, do you have a suggested set of instructions for fundraising participants? Um, we we don't we I mean we we can certainly give our, our opinion and our advice, but um, you know your constituency best. So if you, I, I would say coming up with a good default messaging within your fundraising campaigns that will um, populate for them, so that if they are not inclined to create their own personal story or if they're they're more maybe more in a rush. Um, the verbiage is already there to get their their um, their friends and family to support them. So I think just coming up with really great messaging that is specific to your your cause and and your uh, your supporters would be really helpful. And to add to that, Chris, um, you can so you can use our run sign up give sign up database where we do have kind we have simple very simplified tutorials on mm -hmm. step by step on how to create a fundraiser what you do with your fundraiser so if you're looking at it from that perspective then we have 
simple things that you can kind of customize to make it your own. And like Chris said, we do have a, an area where you can put in a default message for your fundraisers to walk them through to walk them through what they need to do or to just put a general story out there. So if they don't want to create their own story, you have that done for them. And I did want to just touch on really quick, Tracy mentioned, asked the question of if we are going to post these on YouTube. Yes, we do. Oh, yeah. And if you just, if you go to YouTube and type in run sign up, you'll, you'll find us. And yeah. this will be one of the videos that pops up in the front because it's one of the most recent. So you'll be able to find all this stuff there as well as, as on our website. And you can gauge what time of year it is by how blonde my hair is in the webinar we're doing. So you're like, oh, this looks like winter. It's a little <laughs> ashy or a little darker. It's a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I think that is about all the questions we have for today. Uh, if we missed any, we'll certainly uh, send you an email to cover those questions. Thank you so much for joining us today. We loved uh, getting to uh, speak a little bit more about how to uh, bring in uh, supporters with all kinds of different tools we have here on Give, Sign Up, and Run, Sign Up. But Whitney, I thank you so much for your help. Elizabeth, I thank you for covering us uh, for questions. And uh, I hope everyone has a great day and a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Yes. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. This is great.